Validation is about uh, demonstrating that the analytical method is fit for purpose. And in this context, uh, uh, the method must be able to determine analyte in presence of a multitude of other components. It means the method has to be selective. Identity confirmation of analyte is uh, uh, closely related to, to selectivity, therefore we discuss them together in this chapter. Anal analytical method must produce uh, uh, analytical signal in response to presence of analyte in the mixture. At the same time, the signal should be unaffected by the other components in the mixture. It means the method has to be selective. Uh, if the method is already in use and we detect a signal in, as a response uh, to something in the uh, sample, then uh, we must be able to confirm that the, this something in the sample is really our analyte that we want to determine. Uh, therefore, uh, we have to collect the information required for an analyte uh, confirmation already during the validation of the method. LCMS is um, a good method in terms of selectivity and also for identity confirmation. Selectivity, uh, as uh, defined by International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IOPAC, uh, says that um, the selectivity is the ex extent to which other substances interfere with the determination of substance according to given procedure. In this definition, I'd like to stress uh, two terms. Uh, first of those is extent, which um, shows that um, the selectivity is not a yes-no de decision. It, it has a graduation. The method can be more or less uh, selective. If the method is 100% um, selective, there is a specific term for this specificity. Uh, unfortunately, uh, different um, uh, validation guidelines uh, use different terms to uh, express uh, selectivity. For example, uh, uh, AOAC, Eurochem, and Food and Drug Administration uh, guidelines of validation, uh, they use the selectivity as was defined by IOPAC. On the other hand, uh, International Conference for Un Harmonization and Nordval uh, use uh, term uh, specificity, but they mean the same thing as, as selectivity, by, as defined by IOPAC. Uh, in this presentation, we uh, use term selectivity as defined by IOPAC and um, also all the other terms as defined by IOPAC. Uh, another uh, important term in the um, definition of selectivity would be interference. So what can be interference and how does it affect the selectivity? Uh, Interfering substances may behave like analyte and contribute to the signal of analyte, thereby increasing the, the signal uh, which we attribute to the analyte signal. Uh, also, there are other types of interferences which may uh, interfere with the signal uh, of the analytical procedure. And this type of interference is called matrix effect, and this is uh, de dealt with uh, separately. But uh, in LCMS, uh, selectivity is achieved uh, in both components of the system, in liquid chromatography part and in the mass spectrometry part. Uh, they both are very important, but let's start uh, from the liquid chromatographic selectivity. Uh, mostly, liquid chromatographic selectivity is um, 
uh, assessed by means of the peak resolution. Peak resolution takes into account the uh, retention times of analyte and the closest uh, related peak and also the peak width at half height of, of the peak. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, the selectivity uh, factor, uh, alpha factor, then this uh, is not as good um, uh, criteria for uh, peak uh, selectivity as is peak resolution because alpha value does not take into account the peak, height, uh, peak uh, width at half height. Now, how do different validation guidelines address the uh, selectivity, chromatographic selectivity? Uh, for example, the Food and Drug Administration guideline foresees that uh, the uh, peak resolution must be at least two. Uh, several other gu guidelines also specify the peak resolution, but there are also other important guidelines which are not so straightforward. For example, Eurochem just uh, needs the demonstration of separation of, on, on a column of different chemistry. So approach is rather different from, from this peak resolution uh, approach. Uh, very strict uh, are, are the International, International Conference of Harmonization Validation Guidelines. Uh, they require that no other compound should be detectable at analyte retention time with other analytical methods like infrared spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance or mass spectrometric methods. Let's consider this uh, uh, last requirement. It's really a strict uh, requirement because each and every um, organic molecule produces signal in infrared spectrum or in, in nuclear magnetic resonance spectrum. Therefore, this last uh, requirement demands for absolute purity of chromatographic peak. So, why is it so that some validation guidelines are very strict and others are not so strict uh, with respect to uh, selectivity? Uh, let's discuss this on example of two uh, different situations. First, in a case of pharmaceutical analysis. If um, a pharmaceutical ingredient uh, is of interest, uh, then all the byproducts, all the additives which may appear in the mixture are of interest. Therefore, we consider all those components as analytes and they must be chromatographically separated. On the other hand, uh, in case of, for example, pesticide residues and analysis in vegetables, uh, there are multitude of endogenous uh, compounds originating from vegetable, uh, which may coelute with analyte, analyte in this case being the, the pesticide. Uh, as then the genus compounds of vegetables are not uh, harmful, then we are not um, analyzing those components as analytes and we just have to demonstrate that we are able to uh, analyze or de detect them, uh, the um, uh, analyte free of um, influence of those endogenous compounds. This brings us to the uh, so-called detector side uh, selectivity. <laughs>